Derivatives of exponential functions. Let's begin with the nice neat one. This is the easiest of the lot. It's just e to the x. Fantastic. If I say e to the power of some function of x, this is chain rule, right? Function of a function. There's the inside. Inside. Here, <coughs> excuse me, is the outside. So when you do chain rule, <coughs> excuse me, allergies. Um, you have to do each in sequence. You've got to remember to do both, right? So what would we call the derivative of the inside function in this case? Just call it f dash. There's the inside. When you differentiate the outside, it's an exponential. Well, what happens when you differentiate an exponential function? Nothing happens. So you just get back what you started with. So far, so good. All right, now this one here, we had to do a bit of mucking around to change the base. Does anyone remember what answer we get? It's very similar to this one. It starts with a to the x, but it's off by a scaling factor. Do you remember that? What was the scaling factor? It's going to be log a. Yeah. Now, this is the kind of one where it turns up infrequently enough that it's a little harder to remember. But go back. We did the proof. It's not that difficult. OK, now just before we jump off there, I want you to remember every time you make a statement about differentiation like this, you make a statement about integration as well. So just because I've got the space right up here, I'm going to write this one in. If I were to integrate the right hand side, I should get back to the left, right? I'm doing everything in reverse. So therefore, this will be giving me e to the x with one difference plus a c, right? Plus the constant. So you can see that I could have come from any of those and you would have gotten the same derivative. Uh, and you can keep on going. We'll come back to those in a minute. Right, logs. So when you differentiate the nice base e, log base e of x, and I've just written it the short way, what do you get? Yeah, you get the reciprocal function, the hyperbola, yeah? Um, it's worth noting, again, if I came from here, then what you'd end up with is just the part of it that applies to log x. And only part, only half of it does, right? So if you wanted to be all specific, you'd say that. Okay. What about when we do chain rule? What happens? Okay, it's really nice and easy to remember, right? It's f dash on f. It's just like this. You do the inside, then you do the outside. Lastly, if you change the base, remember we needed to go back to our log laws to do this one. How would I rewrite this in order to make it workable in base e? What's just the, before I differentiate, what is the change of base rule tell me that I can rewrite this as? Very good. Log x on whatever base I choose, I'm going to choose base e, over log a. The a started on the bottom down here, so it ends on the bottom over here. Okay. Being that 1 over log a is just a constant, I know that once I differentiate, sorry I'm going to be naughty just because I've run out of space on my whiteboard, that's going to be just like this, right? Except there's a 1 over log a as a constant. So it's going to be 1 over log x log a is probably the best way to write it. x log a. It's probably less ambiguous to write it like this rather than log a x because then you're like, is the x in the log or not? It's not, so this makes it really clear. Wonderful. So, just like before, how we said this statement about differentiation makes this statement about integration, let's now have a look at using reverse chain rule on these exponentials, right? So what I'm searching for is something that looks like this. If I find something that looks like this, I can integrate it to come back here. Does that make sense? So if you wanted to summarize that in a rule, you'd say the integral of f dash e to the f, f dash e to the f, should send you back to this guy, just e to the f. Does that make sense? So that's what I would like. If I can see e to the f and then f dash there at the same time, it's just like looking for f dash on f, just it looks slightly rearranged. Okay? So have I got that here? What's f of x in this case? It's the power, right? It's 1 plus 3x. So what would f dash be for this particular function? f dash would just be 3. Now I don't have a 3 there, right? But that's okay. 3 is just a constant. So, if I want 3, all I have to do is compensate by dividing by 3 out the front. Is that okay? So I've 
done this in order to have f dash e to the f in the inside. That's the thing I want to integrate. That's just going to be equal to this. So the one third is still hanging out the front because it's not part of the integration. And then what do I end with? e to the f. Does that make sense? Which in this case is 1 plus 3x. It was indefinite, so what am I missing? Plus c. Happy times. Okay. Now, have a look at this guy. Remarkably similar, even though it looks so very different. It's a quotient, but I hate dealing with quotients when it comes to calculus. I want to get away from them as quick as I can. So how can I rewrite this guy so that there are no quotients involved? Any suggestions? Say it a bit louder, Russell. Okay, so Russell's actually done two steps here. I'm going to do the first one, the in-between one, and then I'm going to go to Russell's step. This part here, right, my index laws tell me that's just e to the 2x. Is that okay? I'm just multiplying those powers. Indices are fine. But Russell saw the next step already, which is that this is on the denominator. I want it up the top, so I can write it with a negative index. Is that okay? Usually we don't like negative indices because they're gross and awkward to work with, but with calculus, they're much better. Okay? I'm still not quite there yet. This is not in this form. I've got e to the f, but I've got no f dash, so what would f dash be in this case? Yeah, negative 2, there's the derivative. So if I want a negative 2 in here, then what do I put out the front to compensate? Negative a half. Do you see it'll cancel, cancel, and send you back? Now I'm pretty much ready to go. The negative a half is outside the process of integration, so that's why it remains untouched. What do you end up with once you're integrating? E to the say it again, Erica. Very good. There's that e to the f plus my c, very good, okay? Now, just a little, um, a little side note. Can I rub off this left-hand side while I'm talking? Is that okay? Just a little side note, you'll sometimes see all of this written slightly differently because uh, f dash notation is not the only way to talk about derivatives. So for instance, let me show you this. Stay with red. If I had this in this form, uh, let's go like this. E to the u, hmm. Okay, so what are we looking at here? So u is a common letter that we use for substitution, right? So we would often say, let u equal, and then it'd be the, the 1 plus 3x, or the minus 2x, or something like that, okay? Now this looks a little bit weird, because you've got a function in u, you're trying to integrate with respect to x, so what do you do, okay? Um, when you do substitution normally, what do you have to do as an extra process over here to change this into the right thing? What do you do? Yeah, you, you choose some let u equal blah blah blah, right? And then you say, okay, well let's differentiate that blah 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 and get something out. And then that, that guy there allows us to switch over, okay? Now watch this. If I insert that into here, right? If I have the derivative inside here, that du on dx, watch what happens, okay? e to the u times du on dx, if it were there, times dx, right? What happens with the dx's? They just cancel. And this, of course, like this is just a regular exponential. It's just e to the u plus c. Now just compare this with what's written over there, okay? Whoops. e to the u plus c. That's exactly the same as this. Do you see that? Just labeled slightly differently. Just a different letter and different notation. Yeah? What about this line here? Do you see how similar this is to what's been written here? Where's the e to the f of x over here? What's the equivalent? It's this guy, e to the u, right? What's this guy equivalent to? That's f dash. Do you see it? Just written in different notation because it's not f, it's u. Does that make sense? But of course it all cancels out because these derivatives can act just like fractions in this context. All right?